eye for as long as possible. It is a mega trend in science today. Big investors are zeroing in on what's known as age reversal research by biotech firms with massive funding. And it's accelerating the pace of research like never before. This week here on CNA, we, or rather you, are looking at living longer. That's right, Wesu. In the second part of our series this week, I take a deep dive into why this space is seeing some of the largest financial institutions making bets on solving the problem of aging. How old do you feel? Whatever age you are right now, do you want to feel younger? A recent study in China used artificial intelligence to analyze what people could do to achieve just that. And the findings grabbed global attention. One of the co-authors of the study says new tech can measure how just thinking old can make you older. We have this new ability to track aging rates through aging clocks. So my group has contributed considerably to the field of uh, uh, aging clocks by applying advanced artificial intelligence to predict your biological age at every level and even psychological age, because you're also aging on a psychological level. Uh, and uh, some of that uh, aging happens faster in people uh, who are um, uh, living unhealthy lifestyles. So you can possibly reverse uh, some of those clocks that are very sensitive to lifestyle. Mr. Zavaronkov is 44 years old. He's become a leading voice in cutting edge research on aging and age related disease. His Hong Kong-based company, Insilico Medicine, was set up in 2014 around one central premise, to use AI to identify novel drug targets for untreated diseases. Over the past 20 years, we've seen massive advances in pretty much every field of uh, biotechnology and technology. And many of those advances are converging. And also we've seen many of those technologies gain credibility because they can have dual purpose. So you can actually take some of those therapeutics to the market uh, to tackle a specific disease, for example, an age-associated disease, and tackle aging at the same time. And now investors realize that uh, they can, uh, so to speak, kill uh, multiple birds with one stone. Uh, by investing in longevity companies that have a more or less b credible business model. And at the same time, you got a shot at something that is uh, possibly transformative and can yield above average re uh, rewards. And the financial rewards the longevity industry offers has seen an entire business ecosystem emerge. And it's not just about biotech and biomedicine. One of them is Regenosis a longevity centre in Singapore that began as an idea among friends. The idea of uh, um, wanting to stay young and healthy hits everybody at my age and older. And um, the, the group of friends I have were all the specialist doctors. Right? And each of them knows something about it, but collectively have never done anything about it. And we're saying, hey, why don't we do something about geroscience and set it to be the first geroscience clinic in Singapore, possibly Asia. The focus on actual science to treat aging has sparked a global rush, attracting big money and big names. Now when you're in the private sector and you look at uh, aging, you can say, wait a minute, there are 8 billion people aging right now. The, the market is infinite. <laughs> um, we now have potential interventions that might work, and we have ways to measure it. And so let's go after it. Why are we not doing this? It's probably the best way to improve quality of life and make a fortune at the same time. So there's a lot of uh, private sector interest now. There's still some challenges, but I, I feel like that that momentum will probably keep going. If we talk about demands in this region, uh, we can talk about, uh, let's look at the demand for medical wellness then. Medical wellness is a 1.2 trillion industry today with a CAGR of very high, about 15%. We are looking at 2.5 trillion by 2030. Right. 
market. So it is a very huge uh, uh, industry with Asia Pacific actually having the fastest uh, growth in the amount of uh, people getting old. And therefore, uh, with the highest demand, I guess, in this region. Singapore uh, is one of the um, major mega hubs for longevity research globally. You see that Singapore is betting on future technologies and is attracting really top scientists from all over the world to come to Singapore and perform this wonderful research and also Japan uh, because, first of all, they recognize uh, aging as a huge mega trend in, uh, in the world. Uh, also in Asia, uh, and they also recognize the value of those dual purpose therapeutics where you can go after a specific disease or a bunch of diseases and also target aging at the core. In silico is just one of the biotechs involved in longevity research vying for venture capital in this space. Multiple investors have poured in more than $400 million since 2014. It's attracted the interest of some of the world's biggest investment funds, including Pavilion Capital, a wholly owned subsidiary of Singapore's sovereign wealth fund, Tomasic Holdings. Mr. Zavaronkov says companies like his are benefiting from the growing need to accelerate the pace of drug discovery. As the discovery of novel therapeutics continues, a growing number of people are already experimenting with prescription drugs that could possibly stave off aging. So far, the toolkit is very limited in pharmacological interventions. Currently, we've got metformin, acarbose, uh, rapamycin, SGLT2 inhibitors, and a few others. Uh, you know, maybe PDE5s, even Viagra may have some life extending effects. We have not seen enough evidence that these uh, drugs substantially increase lifespan. The natural product market is already out there, and people that want to you know, be at the cutting edge, can buy products and take them now. I think that, you know, I think that's okay. I think most, if they're taking safe products, there's good safety data. And uh, the most important thing is that the companies marketing these products are honest about the data they have. Probably nothing's gonna work in everybody. We need to see who responds to what intervention. And the momentum among research teams in Asia to develop interventions at the laboratory level is growing. In 2021, a team of researchers at Tokyo's Juntendo University developed a vaccine that can remove a type of cell called a senescent cell that builds up with age in mice. They build up in humans too and are sometimes referred to as zombie cells because they don't die. It's believed they trigger arterial sclerosis and other diseases. Mice treated with the vaccine saw their senescent cells decrease. A vaccine for aging, if you will. Technically, it is not so difficult to generate human version of the senolytic vaccination. So I hope that we can apply this treatment technique for humans within five or 10 years. Actually, we have shown that previously that uh, aging or metabolic stress promote accumulation of senescent cells in various tissues, thereby contributing to uh, age-associated disease, such as atherosclerosis, diabetes, and dementia. The leap from mice to humans is often a giant one. So should we be optimistic about a cure for death? I don't think that uh, our technique can rejuvenate aged people, but uh, we can, you know, we may be able to stop the acceleration of aging process. I am actually optimistic, but because our technique is theoretically effective for various age-associated disease. Theoretically, I can develop the various way to improve the age-associated disease. Yeah, that's my hope. <laughs> Should we have hope, first of all, for the future? And, and what kind of time span uh, are we looking at? Uh, and how can we provide longevity as a service so that it is accessible, so that it is equitable for all? Many 
areas of technology are converging, we should be very optimistic about uh, how we look in the, into the future uh, and at the future. So if you are in your 50s right now, you should not even consider retirement. So that's my advice to you, right? And you should continue investing in lifelong learning and career planning, regardless of where you are, who you are. You should invest in yourself and you should have this very, very lengthy longevity horizon.